Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're watching Batman on film. I have given a name to my pain. Hey now, welcome to episode number 58 of the Batman on Film blog. I am the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Jet Ramey, and with me from way up north in Minnesota, my second home state though, Garrett, that's my second yeah. home state, is Garrett Griff. Hi Garrett, how are you doing, man? I'm sir? doing well, sir. Yeah, why not uh, Why not be all the way at the top, yeah. you know, <laughs> north, all the way north and all the way south, it's you know? basically... Yeah, I mean, it's basically that. It's uh, yeah. right in dead center, north and right. south. Yes. You don't have to change time zones, you know, no, when it's... That's, uh, that's correct. That's yeah, correct. You can, you can just flip back and forth based the on the seasons. You know, why not? The only thing that that's, it takes me getting used to is being there, being there in Minnesota in the summer and in the winter because in the summer it stays light at least yeah. an hour longer than it does here, you know, yeah. because of the geography. It really, yeah, it really does. And, the sun and, doesn't get all the way down until after 10 p.m. Yeah. in and the summer. Where, where I'm, where we go, and what you know is, you know, even further north from the from the Twin Cities, so it may add a little bit longer daylight just, you know, from the the, the, the latitude aspect of it. And and then vice versa. Oh, my in, gosh. In the winter, it's it's flipping dark by three thirty, four o'clock. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I, I remember being a kid in the winters, you know, in high school and driving in, I was, I was a wrestler in high school and we'd have morning practices and then after school practices. Right. So, um, you drive in, you know, early enough that you were there before class started and there's no chance you were seeing yeah. this, just none. Yeah. And then, you know, if you school get out at three ten, practice would get out at five, you're not seeing the sun ever in yeah. minnesota in the winter yeah you know if you aren't uh if you aren't outside at like nine and then also by three fifteen, those are your only hours of daylight yes it's like um not nearly as bad but it, it, it just it reminds me sometimes of like uh nolan's insomnia when he's in alaska and it's right he can't sleep it's daylight and you know the whole, the whole the whole time so whatever all right also we are Give or, well, give or take when it comes to minutes and hours and so forth. 508 days from the Batman. So, it's coming. We're, it, it, yeah, the Batman is coming. Batman is coming. And that's, and, and that's what we're going to talk about. Oh, before we talk about the Batman, um, what you got... What you got planned for the, for the Super Bowl? What, and specifically, are you cooking anything up and what is it? Yeah, so uh, we are actually going to stay home for the Super Bowl. Uh, we are we've kind of we've always got a party at the Grev House just with the no amount of kids we have. So uh, we'll be home with the boys. My wife's actually away on a uh, girls' weekend trip. Okay. Uh, she brought our youngest with, so the new baby is with. So it's just okay. me and the and the big boys. And we're going to be making some chili today. All right. Uh, probably making some uh, some buffalo wings and okay. uh, you know some assorted chips and snacks. Kind of going to be a snack dinner. Yes. The boys are really into that snack okay. dinner. So when my wife gets home, we'll start making some of that and get ready and kind of stay close to home. I How about you, sir? Yeah, what, what do you I'm, have going on? I'm staying home. I've got my six foot three. Yeah. yeah. That was was 265 pound offensive lineman uh, here who eats a lot. But he he's actually, get, since football's over with, he didn't have to keep his weight up anymore. Yeah, he's down, he's down to about two thirty. So he's oh man, he's on the slim he's down. Lost, he's lost about thirty pounds since football season, and uh, that doesn't that doesn't mean that he will not uh, partake in food. So right. uh, I made a um, a gumbo, and I, specifically, it's it's called a green gumbo or a, a goomba zerbs, or uh, you know, down here, um, how how will we say it? 
uh, gumbo, zer zerbs, zerbs, whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to sound Cajun there, but uh, it's essentially it's just it's a, a chicken and sausage gumbo, but you add assorted greens. I just I use a mix of collard and kale, and um, we had we sampled it last night because like chili, like go anything like that, any kind of stew or anything, soup. It's always better the second day, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. So I made it yesterday, yeah, and it was... you got to uh, let it simmer for a long time yeah. or just say, pause, we'll come back so to it tomorrow. It, it was, it's, right. it's something else, and uh, we'll have that. I think we're going to do some chicken wings and just other stuff like, you know, just assorted type of snacky stuff. So anyway, oh, who you got in the Super Bowl? Who you pulling for? Who you think is going to win? That's you know... Two different questions. Absolutely. So I think... Um, Man, I think Kansas City wins, and I'm actually pulling for the Niners, which is a little bit weird because I think a lot of fans typically say, like, you know, whoever beat your team out of the playoffs, you want to see them go down, and I, I'm not that at all. So the Vikings lost to the 49ers in a, in a pretty big way, and then I was Niners taking the Niners versus Green Bay the next week, happy to see them, you know, kick yeah. Green Bay out. Yeah. So now I'm looking for, uh, I'd like to see an NFC championship. You know, I'll be the NFC homer. Okay. Um, but uh, I think I think KC probably gets it. And I'm fine with that. I'd like to see Andy Reid okay. get a Super Bowl. I am, uh, I'm usually an NFC guy because of my beloved Dallas Cowboys. However, it, it, go, it would go against every fiber in my being. Yeah. To pull for the San Francisco 49ers. And if you know yeah. the history between I I was 16 years old when the catch happened in high school and I'm still not over that yet and it's been I mean almost 40 years now. And right. uh, you know Yeah. That's hardwired into you yes, at this point. Yes, There's going to be no way around okay, it. If, if if Green Bay was in the Super Bowl, would you pull for them? No, no. Okay. At that no, at that point no, no. Okay. Absolutely not. I think that's just it. It's like, where's the history? Where's the rivalry? I've never been a uh, 49ers fan, and yeah. some of their fans this year, I think, have been obnoxious. So it kind of would pain me to see them get the win. Um, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is I'm just looking for a good game. I, I like Pat Mahomes. He's, yeah. he's he's a great young quarterback, and Andy Reid's a talented head coach. It, it would be fantastic. I, just, yeah. I think it's going to be a good hard-nosed football game, and it's kind of – it, it, it might be a little bit of a referendum on old school football versus, yeah. you know, that new air raid offense. True. So yeah, we'll see what so happens. I am going to, so I will be pulling for the, the formerly, the uh, team formerly known as the Dallas Texans. If you did not sure. know that they were yeah. the, the Dallas Texans in the AFL in 1960. I think they spent two or three seasons in Dallas. They, them and the Cowboys both shared the cotton bowl as their home, uh, uh, stadium and um, uh, they kind of started out even and then the Cowboys came a little bit more popular and so uh, Lamar Hunt moved them to Kansas City where they became the Chiefs but I will pull for the uh, the Kansas City Chiefs slash old Dallas Texans and I think they're going to win I like Mahomes um, and uh, he's a Texas boy and you know what oh, yeah. even though Andy Reid Coach, the, the, another team that I, that I have a tremendous amount of hate for, it would be the oh, Philadelphia man. Eagles. No I, joke. I do like Andy Reid, and I like to see him get a Super Bowl. So, Agreed. All right. That's enough of – well, not, <laughs> never enough of it. I can do whole no. shows on, on this and for, on, on cooking. So, But let's talk you gotta about – You've got to have you on uh, what are the odds sometime when you can do just a full football show. Oh, so uh, the absolutely. Batman fans don't yes. have to get annoyed by us absolutely. for the first I would love to. minutes. <laughs> so um, uh, this last week – Golly, has it been? It's was it Monday or so? Well, anyway, within the last week, Warner Brothers sent out a starter production press release for the Batman. Um, obviously, we kind of knew this from Matt Reeves' uh, tweets, which I love the way he announced the cast. And he 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 the day before he kind of announced the starter production because he had a nice, a cool right. picture, uh, you know, on on um, on Twitter announcing it day one and then with a uh, clapper board or whatever the, right. you know you call placard those things thing. placard yes and uh the main cast of course is robert pattison uh zoe kravitz paul dano um J J uh, jeffrey wright john Turturro, peter sarsgaard jamie lawson who's a newcomer uh yeah. and, of course andy circus and colin farrell and obviously there will be more people but sure that is probably the main cast. cast. What's your thoughts on that? I think we've, I mean, it's a good cast, man. 
Oh, it's an incredible cast. I mean, it's a, I mean, there's a lot of um, just highly talented actors, and um, you know, even where uh, I like Zoe Kravitz quite a bit. You know, I said I talked about her. I think on a, one of the podcasts we did. You know, when when you and, and um, you started hearing some of the rumors for some other folks mm-hmm. too were mentioning actresses they kind of heard were in the running. She was she was um, one of my picks. Uh, Anna De Armas was the other one. I liked her. Um, yeah, and. Uh, I, you know, between that, between that casting, um, you know, Pattinson, obviously we've talked about quite a bit. Colin Farrell, I think is going to do something pretty cool with the penguin from everything we're starting to see come through. And then, you know, Dan O'Circus as Alfred, I think could be incredibly interesting. Like there's just not really a weak spot. I don't know. Um, you know, her name escapes me. The the relative newcomer, I think. uh, uh, Jamie Lawson. Yeah, I, I don't need potential her. Yeah. political candidate, I think, from what we've read. I think, yeah, uh, she's playing, and I was going to go through what they're playing in a second, but yeah, I'm a mayoral candidate, so. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, Yeah. other than that, I mean, everybody else, I'm very familiar with their work. I think, you know, there's, if I, you know, I think they're all very strong actors. It'll be interesting to see what Zoe Kravitz brings to the role because she's kind of been doing this thing or at least getting these roles lately where she's just a little bit kind of um, hazy or is playing a character that's kind of working through some stuff and is fairly distant. So I'm used to seeing her for probably the last three, four roles take on a character like that. She's, she's like that in Pretty Little Liars. Or not Pretty Little Liars. What's that other? Uh, Big Little Lie mm-hmm. um, on HBO. So it'll be interesting to see um, her approach to Catwoman, which I think will probably be something a little bit different. Um, and she is very skilled. So I, I'm hoping she doesn't get typecast in just playing that sort of, you know, distanced, affected role. Yeah, you would think Catwoman would be a very assertive, um, absolutely, confident, absolutely, confident right. woman, you know, yeah. in, in general. So, yeah, you're right. So the main villains... I guess we could say that Catwoman is Catwoman really a villain? I mean, she's a anti-hero. I mean, I can't, I, she, you know, but she's yeah, I guess it's quote, unquote, quote unquote unquote she's a villain, one of the villains. Yeah, I, I guess you know it's it's yeah. funny. <clears throat> so my you know you and I were talking yesterday, and I mentioned my wife's out of town. Yeah. Typically, my wife's out of town. We uh we the boys watch a little more TV and we watch a little more superhero TV than than we do when mom's around making sure we're educational. Um, and we watched a couple episodes of the animated series off the DC Universe app, and the boys had the same question for me. They said, "Is, is really? Catwoman really yeah. bad? Is she yeah. really bad, Dad? Because they seem like they're friends, but she's stealing things." I'm like, "Wow, boys, it's a complicated relationship." <laughs> you know, you think about this. Yes. You know, all the way back, you know, to the, the '66 series and different comic oh, book uh, uh, back interpretations. To, and back to her. You know, this is the 80th anniversary of Catwoman. It, right back to her original incarnation in Batman number one in 1940, there was a dynamic there between between it. Yeah. Two. So, um, and then obviously King did his whole Bat Cat run yeah, to you know yeah. different people have different responses to that. But yeah, it's tough to it's certainly tough to label her as strictly a villain at this yes. point, right? It's something so, else. Yeah. So villains, just for the sake of for this show, Catwoman, the Riddler, Carmine Falcone. And the penguin, or right. the uh, well, how many? That's four main villains. Um, my take is that Matt Reeves has a trick up his sleeve that we probably won't discover in in that regard until we see the movie. So sure. I don't think I don't think the main villain, quote unquote, is going to be as obvious as what we see in the casting and what we see, um, you know, in this press release. So, what's your thoughts on that? And 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 the yeah, characters it, he's using. Yeah, it, it's um it's interesting, right? Because I think you know, he had that tweet months and months ago with the '60s series yeah. uh, costumes on the mannequins, was, was and made, lo and behold, made, yeah, telling us right then and there, you yeah. know. So yeah, here's what you're getting, you know. Yeah. And the, so I've sort of thought about this a bit. Like, is there something else? Is there a trick up his sleeve? You know, the rumors around Two Face were there forever, and it you know it turns out that that uh, at least to this point we're not mentioning Two Face. Is there still something there? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Um, what who's going to play what role is interesting. You know, I think given what we've seen to this point, the most obviously the most obvious thing would be 
Colin Farrell's Penguin is going to be the main antagonist, but I don't know that you can assume that either, and that might be a bit of a distraction, especially considering that's, I mean, he's the only actor that's really doing a lot of press for this thing. And of course, it's it's sort of via interviews for other stuff, but yes. he's bringing yeah. up Batman a lot, and it kind of makes me kind of think the same thing. If you're putting this guy out in front and center so much, and Penguin is the... Um, you know, one of the villains that we're most familiar with and have seen on live action and goes way back. And the Rid- you can say the same thing for the Riddler, but we're not seeing Paul Dano do anything. Like, is that a distraction? Is that a sleight of hand? And we're yes. going to get something else. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Can't wait to find out. I, I hope so. I think so. I think that this being a detective mystery, you got to think there's something like that going to take place, you know? And right. you know, with with Chinatown being a big influence, um, you've got sure. that now. You've got the there's going to be some kind of political intrigue going on with this Jamie Lawson playing um, a. I had a name written down now. Now I left it off, but um, the this mayoral candidate. So there's something you know something going on here. Uh, we'll get. To, I want to. We're going to get to Two Face in just a second. That's an interesting topic, but it mentions. Uh, in the press release, it mentions that um, with Jeffrey Wright, that he's playing GCPD James Gordon, not Commissioner Gordon. It doesn't say Commissioner Gordon. Yeah, so, I noticed that. I yeah. noticed that too. Yeah. So, what rank is Jim Gordon in this movie? What do, I, I, you know, is he sergeant? Is he lieutenant? I don't think he's a you know street cop at all. But you know, I don't think he's. I think he's commissioner lieutenant. in this. Yeah. No, my money's on lieutenant. My money's on Lieutenant. And it's it's funny. I watched Batman Begins last night after I got the boys down. And then, you know, the final scene where uh, he says, well, it's Lieutenant Gordon Lieutenant, now yeah, in Batman. Yeah. 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 And yeah. It, it feels like, you know, we've kind of been saying this feels like maybe a year two, year three Batman. Yes. yes. Which would probably lend itself well mm-hmm. to Lieutenant Gordon. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and you know, it we're getting a, a DA that's not. Harvey. So thinking about like, I, I assume mm-hmm. this is before, you know, maybe that's a bad assumption. We can talk about Two-Face separately. Um, but it feels like this is not yet Commissioner Gordon. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe this is part of the story that uh, that earns Gordon his promotion too. Who knows? And that's the thing I was that I had next to talk about. Thank you for that uh, uh, segue there, sir. Um, that Peter Sarsgaard is playing District Attorney Gil Colson. So Gil Colson is the DA of Gotham. Is it after Two Face, after Harvey Dent, or is it yeah, before Harvey don't... Dent becomes right. the DA? Is Harvey is Harvey there and he's assistant? Is Harvey already Two Face and this yes. is his replacement? I don't know. You know, I think we heard rumors you know, months ago at this point. You know, when people and I'm not sure how verified they ever were. I don't think they were really verified at all. That if we got a two face in this movie, it was going to be a a, a two face, two face kind of fully realized. I, I will say this, Garrett. I believe two face was, was it in the script at one time, and then uh, upon additional rewrites and polishes, the character got was it. removed. So that doesn't necessarily mean that Harvey is two face, but it doesn't mean he's not either. Maybe he. You know, sure. I, I, I think like Reeves said that he Reeves did say that. Um, the the rogues gallery exists. He said that publicly. There's a rogues gallery. So we'll see. You know, I think um, there's that part of me that would like to see Harvey be DA for a film or maybe two, and he's like super right. super, and then then Two Face. But if he's already Two Face, I have no problem with that either. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see. So. Um, it's just, I, I love the dynamic that, that these characters he's come up with, you know, and um, it mentions the, the behind the scenes crew. Of course, uh, our friend Michael Uslan is, of course, returning yeah. as one of the executive producers. What I found a little interesting, but not not that much, was that um, Ben Affleck is no longer listed as a producer on the film. Yo- I totally missed that. Yeah. I didn't even, I've read that thing. I don't know how many times I did not realize that. And when they announced, yeah, yeah, they announced, when they announced Reeves hiring a couple years ago, it's listed Matt Reeves as one of of the producers along with Jeff John. Jeff Johnson not mentioned in that either. 
So yeah, Ben, ben Affleck and Jeff Jones. Yeah. That's correct. So yeah. I I'm not skilled enough <clears throat> in the behind the scenes or knowledgeable enough in the behind the scenes stuff. But that tells me, you know, page one rewrite obviously, um, and then enough would have had to change. You know what's interesting to me though is and you know, maybe you were planning on bringing us there. I've had this, I've had this quick yeah. combo a few times on Twitter. Uh, the press release calls this the Batman. And, and yes, exactly. And Ben yeah, Affleck's what? movie was the Batman, um, which I always thought even the name might be enough to keep him with some executor, executive producer credit on the film, no matter if they completely stripped the story away a hundred percent and nothing was yeah. the same. But you know, the debate's been online and little conversations of, is this a, um, working title or a, you know whatever else it's called not secret title that's not the word I'm looking for but you know what I'm saying a, a la Blue Harvest and Star Wars an intimidation game with Batman Begins but to me if it's in the press release this thing's called the Batman it, is it's it not? the Batman yeah it is and it's um I love the name I mean it's almost it's much going you know instead of calling it Batman for the third time you know from the '66 movie right. to the '89 movie to like the twenty 21 version of Batman, just adding the in front of it makes it kind of like that, but something different as well. And yeah, you I, might as I'll, well put a yeah. period at the yeah. end of the title. And I think it feels it, like it's trying to be definitive. It, it might have been a title that maybe Warner Brothers kind of said, we'd like to call this the Batman. And, you know, and it's not, I don't think it's a, a deal breaker with reason. I'm going to call it something else. And if not, I'm going to, you know, I think maybe Reese, right. that's, a, that's a damn good title, you know. Because he sure. he did he did come on board, not to continue what Ben Affleck was doing. He took the gig to make his version of of Batman with his actors and his and his choices of story and and everything else. So I like the I like the title. You you like the title? Is that cool with you? Yeah, or? yeah, I do. I think it's sort of you know we've got Batman, we've got Batman something, you know, yes. forever and and Robin that, whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, and then The Dark Knight, which I think, you know, personally as a fan, I've been clamoring forever. Like, oh, it'd be so cool if they called the a movie The Dark Knight because it's, yeah. you know, the, probably the second most known thing to call Batman. I don't think I don't know if we'll, we'll ever get a uh, The Caped Crusader, but, you yeah. know. Yeah. But to go back and say The Batman, and it, it does two things for me. It makes me think that it's early in his career mm -hmm. when people wouldn't have called, you know, this, the the hero alias of Bruce Wayne, just Batman, like that's his name. They could have, you know, being he'd be referred to as the Batman, yeah, the, yeah right? Like, the, yeah, maybe he's Batman. he's such an enigma. No, no pun intended, because yes. the Riddler's in there. That is he is he a human? Is he is it some you know? Is he a vampire? Is he is some something supernatural? You know, this Batman, you know. Exactly, and I've always loved that presentation of Batman or where he is in yeah. his career at that point where where the public at large uh, don't think of him as, you know, Gotham sort of, uh, that's their hero and that's who protects yeah. their city. It's yeah. this mythological thing and, mm -hmm. you know, is it some sort of uh, crypto creature, you know, is it a giant bat, is it, a, is it something supernatural like the Batman? I, I like that. And it also, you know, what I was saying earlier, and I think um, I was stepping on what you were saying just a little bit, but it feels, you put that the there, it feels a bit definitive. Like, this is the presentation of the Batman. It's not just a Batman or Batman that you already know. It's something a bit new. It's a, here's the Batman. This is what yeah. I think of, of Batman. I, I, I remember as a kid, my first, I, I know I read comics early on. I say read. My mother bought them for me, and I looked at the pictures, you know. And, 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 and frankly, it's one of the things that helped me learn to read at a young age. And, but, you know, I, I've said this before. I think my first, the first comic I really remember reading is Batman 251, The Joker's Five-Way Revenge from 1973. I was seven or eight years old at the time. And I... I and, and that era of comics, I remember them calling him the Batman, which I had right. been used to just Batman from the 60s, 60s you know, uh, Adam West series. But I always thought that was cool, the, the Batman. And it, I've, right. always prefer, I, I've always preferred that, you know, calling him it, the it's, Batman. It sort of strips away a feeling of familiarity. Yeah. It's like when you... 
so you think about like how you it's it's a bit more formal. You know, you yeah. you often refer to uh, Michael Uslan as Mr. Uslan, right? It's not yes. Michael. There's yes. that formality. It's yes. that you know. It's, he, gives, it's a bit, he gives me shit about it, and I and I I know I, I can't help. I I always will call him that. You know. Yeah. So. Old school respect, yeah, man. It feels yeah. it feels like that. It feels like it's a little bit distance and formalized instead of like colloquial, just like mm-hmm. oh, Batman. You know, it's yeah. oh, no, the yeah. Batman. Yes, yes. So it, yeah, great. We brought that up. I was going to talk about it. It was coming up. Garrett, you're just giving me these setups of these sequels <laughs> that are awesome. But it is called the Batman. Um, the you know that they uh, in that in that placard sla- uh, the you know uh, for the for the scene shot. That, that Matt Reeves gave us a picture of, there's a little bit of a, you know, it says the Batman in red and has some very yeah. distinct type of yeah. font. Um, right. I thought, okay, is this guy, because he's slick, this guy's slick, is he kind of sort of showing us the the film's font logo too? You know, the, or the, right. lo- the font of, the font that will be using the logo. Um, not sure if it is or not. I, I did ask someone in the know, and they said usually on those type of things, it's not the official logo. That that comes from marketing and publicity and so forth. It's usually different from uh, production that comes up with some kind of logo for uh, while they're shooting that you'll find on, you know, the, like the, the director's chairs and sure the the little the carts that bring everybody around, talent around from scene to scene so i do think it's kind of cool i like the way the font looks i don't know if i like the if it was red i would be like super cool with that but i don't i mean i wouldn't hate it but i like the way that looks so what was you, any thoughts about that the look of that yeah it, it, it makes sense <clears throat> to me that you would hear that the official logo and font kind of comes from the marketing people but it it's also seems strange that you know reason go through the the I don't know how difficult it is, but you it certainly feels like an intentional choice would have had been made to present that, to have that there the way mm-hmm. it was, as opposed to just like solid black lettering, right? Mm-hmm. To have it read, to kind of have um, sort of the faded effect on some of the letters. Yeah. Um, that seems like a distinctive choice to me, which yes. of that distinctive choice was made just for the placard or the scene marker. Um okay sure well i guess he's hyper detailed it just would be surprising to me to go through that amount of effort and not have it tie into anything else i guess i uh i looked when i did a a search on google like for the um the the scene placards for like um the dark knight from no one's films and they did have you know that little like in my mug here that you know that sure that logo but the, yep. the the font was very general, you know, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Rise. It wasn't what we saw on the Got it. on the. It was close. It was close, you know, because that was a very um, those that font was very nondescript. It wasn't yeah. extremely unique, you know, to anything. A very plain. This has a little something to it, you know, the fade yeah. out, like as you mentioned, almost kind of looks like typewriter type print that's not completely doesn't really hit you know the old school typewriter right that, you know they kind of leave something behind i don't know i i, I kind of i kind of dug it so i i don't know if that will be what we see on the posters and so forth but it, w- it would be i wouldn't have any problem with it if it was so no not at all yeah yeah all right so start finishing this thing up uh birds of prey comes out next week Oof. Uh, um look I, I'm going to see it Wednesday night at a press screening. Review will be up next week. It's getting very good reviews. Very uh, good reviews. Like very, uh, yeah, very good. Real quick, because I'm, I don't want to, you know, segue. I still want to talk about the Batman. There's a point of, of bringing that up. Real quick, what's uh, what's your excitement level? When are you going to see it? And et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, high, higher than I was expecting. Uh, oddly, I mean, I, I was always going to see it. Um, I was, oh, hey, buddy. <laughs> <Got> <laughs> this is Christian. Hello there. Buddy, can you give me a few minutes? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. No, uh, I, was always get, 
I was always going to see it. Uh, I wasn't, you know, it wasn't one that I was sort of kind of counting the days down for. It looked interesting. Um, I really liked, uh, you know, Margot's approach to Harley Quinn. But as the reviews have continued to come in, um, more and more excited to see what's going on. And I think they've done the right amount of show in the the trailers. So I'm in. I'll probably see it. Um, I don't know. I'll probably end up going Thursday night. I was going to say maybe over the weekend at some point, but I'm guessing by then I'll, I'll start getting more and more excited each day. What I found, and before I move on to why I brought it up, is that a lot of things are like this is laugh out loud funny. Yeah, and it, and I was kind of surprised to see that. And it's it's unique to the genre, so I'm glad to hear that it's, that it's unique to the genre. So the reason I bring up Birds of Prey is that. What I've heard, Warner Brothers kind of holding back on the, the first publicity shots of Pat, uh, Robert Pattinson in the suit, Batmobile logo, until Birds of Prey is released, which is next week. So maybe here, mid-February after that, we may be getting something because I know they're going to be filming in location. And sure. they, I would hope, and I think they're smart enough to, to, to beat the spy pitchers to the punch and get out good shots of the Batmobile and the, the Batsuit. So, yeah, certainly for yeah. the suit and the Batmobile, you want I think they'll want to be able to present that on their terms. And yeah. then also to sort of, you know, not I agree with you in, in, about the Birds of Prey thing. So, you, Birds of Prey comes out, you give that a couple weeks for it to do its own thing. You don't drown out the positive sort of vibe yeah. that that's getting. You let that word carry itself before you come back over the top of it. Because then you sort of get this double up effect, right? As opposed to just one drowning out the other. Yeah, you don't want to, you know, I mean, you don't want to drop the, the right in the middle of this hype for Birds of Prey with yeah. Warner Brothers Snuff it number, out. One, number one IP, Batman, you know, and everybody, right. that's the focus. All right, before we leave, um, I just want to say, um, of course, everybody knows John Beerley passed away, been with Batman on film for probably 20 years or almost 20 years, reviewed Batman for me. Me and Ryan Haas did a um, In Memoriam podcast this morning, and I thought he was the best writer on Batman on film. His reviews were fantastic. Anybody ever, who ever asked me who writes like you do, uh, Garrett, what should we model our reviews on? I would, John, he was fantastic. He'll be missed. Any thoughts before we go about John? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it, so many. Um, the thing that um, that I've said about John is, uh, you know, I I remember interacting with him back on the forums way back in the yeah. day. You know, grew, yeah. grew up basically reading his reviews over the last twenty years, and um, you know, interacted uh, and got to talk to him. You know, in group emails, you know, related to Batman stuff and what we were working on and. When I wanted to, you know, figure out, I've been a writer for a long time, but I hadn't written comic book reviews. And so when I started doing that for the site, John's who I turned to and just always so kind and generous and thoughtful. Um, yeah, he'll, he, uh, he's, he's left a big void. Yeah. And um, it's, it's, it's going to, I know you and I talked briefly about, you know, he did reviews for Batman for how long and how do you hand over an assignment like that? Because I, yeah. there was a point in the King run where I started enjoying the John's reviews of Batman more than the issues themselves. And, uh, man, that's, that's just, and just, you know, just what a, what a kind, generous, decent guy. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I will say that, um, all I'll say is that if there's someone you care about that you may be a little, concerned if they're down reach out to them because you you know just reach out to those people and and appreciate everybody you love and yeah you know absolutely you know that's that's all i've got uh john 1975 2020 you were a great addition to uh bof but you were a better addition to the world because he was beloved worldwide people read oh man stuff. yeah and to yeah. and to a person everyone said the same thing just so, so positive and um, always presented, always looked at the best side of things, you know, and, and how he interacted with the things that he loved. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's made me think twice about how I post about things and the approach I take to things and choosing to talk about stuff that I love as opposed to kind of 
jumping down the throat of stuff that I don't like as much. So he's got a legacy for sure. He was the best of fandom. So with that, yeah, he really was. We're going to just ease out. No dadgum original. John, thank you for everything. You're part of the force. You're part of the 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 bat signal, and we're gonna miss you.